before we get into the first quarter highlights, we'd like to thank the whopping crowd that we have here this afternoon. Despite the fact the uh, some of the gates were locked, uh, <laughs> we got a good crowd that turned out. Somehow they managed to get through. If you'd like to join us, please do. Sundays at about 11.45 at the uh, Stadium Club at Autzen Stadium. Come on down. We'd appreciate you stopping by. You see some of the uh, excited fans here this afternoon. All right, let's get into the first quarter highlights as we start the play. Oregon won the toss of the coin. We'll defer. Cal takes over. We pick it up here on a second down and seven, and here's Russell White. He's a big, tough runner, 6'2", 210 pounds, and he gets into the secondary gain, 22. I think 210 is being a little generous on the lean side. I think he's put on a little weight uh, with the, the hamstring pull. He's, I think, more in the neighborhood of 220 or 225. He's tough. You see Dawkins, that was the only real big play that he had in this game, and then Russell White takes it in, and Boy, I tell you what, it looked pretty easy as uh, they went 80 yards in six plays. Doug Bryan packed, uh, adds the PAT, and it's 7 to nothing, and only two minutes and three seconds have uh, gone off the clock. Well, it sure quieted the crowd a little bit, I know that. And uh, Tommy Thompson comes in and uh, gets everybody excited with this one, just drills it over the Cal re returner's head, and Chad Cote is down there to watch the ball roll dead on the two-yard line. That's an Autzen Stadium record. Uh, for distance in a punt at 76 yards. He's done quite a job for you this year, and he had a tremendous game, maybe his best overall game. So now your defense with an opportunity to give your offense good field position. California with the run by White, and then the pitch, good play by Herman O'Berry. Real nice play. Not only did he intercept uh, three passes, but he played brilliantly the whole game. Uh, watch him slip underneath the fullback's block and come in and make the tackle on Russell White. Uh, for about a one-yard gain. So short of the first, Cal must punt it away. Chris Noonan and Ronnie Harris. Ronnie gives him a little stutter move there to set this up. Good block by Tony Coker, and we get great field position on Ronnie Harris's first punt return in the game. Mark the ball at the 29 of Cal. First play, O'Neal over the top to Jones. Nice catch over the shoulder. Excellent throw. The ball was put exactly where it had to be. This is an audible by Danny. They get up in bump coverage, and he goes up top. And look at the throw. Perfect. Nice catch by Anthony Jones. Out of bounds on about the one-yard line. And on the very next play, good block by Juan Shedrick. He takes the linebacker into the end zone, and Sean Burwell follows. Great block. We actually slipped into an unbalanced line on this. Uh, and found a nice big hole over there after uh, Juan Shedrick cleared the way. So I thought it was important at this point after Cal's early start that your team responded, bounced back, and tied the game with the extra point. I think that was the uh, key to our success and, uh, and now our belief as a team. But here we go again. Uh, the belief that we can respond. And this is a key play right here. Castle makes the saving tackle. Uh, I'm not sure uh, a, a healthy Russell White, a thinner Russell White wouldn't have been gone. And a great play here by Herman O'Berry. Gets the interception. You can see he's got perfect position. He goes up, comes down with it. Dawkins tries to come over the top of him to, to take it away, but he can't. Uh, we get called for a penalty here, and, and I have not seen it on our film, nor do I see it on that film. Uh, the receiver is clearly away. Uh, I'm not sure what it was, but obviously the official saw something. So offensively, you get the ball back. Jones gets six on the reception. Kristen McLemore getting some activity there. Looked like it might have been a face mask as well. Gain of 22 and a first. Good job here. Again, this is another audible by Danny, and he hits Kristen McLemore coming in on the seam and did have a little bit of a face mask, probably a five-yarder, but it was uh, not seen. So. Oregon has to punt it away. Cal gets it back, but they're unable to move the football. Joe Farwell uh, led our team in tackles again. You can see him scrape up into the hole. Good job by uh, Terrell Edwards turning the play back in, not letting it get outside. And uh, Gary Williams comes over to finish it off. Loss of one, second down and 11. Barr trying to go up top, and there's Herman O'Berry once again in great position. I saw that thing bounce up, and I was getting a little bit nervous. Uh, good pressure on that play by Jeff Cummins on, on Barr. And uh, a punt here with an excellent return. We set it up in the middle. It was kicked over the right. He brings it back to toward the middle and then takes it up inside. Good block by Rich Rule. And uh, Ronnie now, and I asked him what he's thinking about lateraling this ball to Eugene Jackson. 
He's been watching the Atlanta Falcons. He has, too much. and I told him I'm not Jerry Glanville. I don't like that kind of stuff. <laughs> You can watch uh, 48 there. Rich Rule will get a just get a shield block, and Obi Babs gets a nice block there. Uh, Rule gets one. Now Babs gets one, and Ronnie comes down. And I think you'll be able to see it from this angle that Eugene Jackson is trailing the play. Good job there by Ronnie shedding that tackle, taking it up the sideline, and he's thinking about pitching the ball back, but changed his mind, and I'm very glad he did. <laughs> So is Ronnie now, too. So first and goal, and it's been a long time since Juan Shedrick uh, found the end zone. He's blocked so well, and this time he got it in. He did. Makes a nice cut, bounces the thing clear outside, and extends the ball out. And you can see the ball comes down right on the goal line. The ground knocks it out, which is not ruled a fumble. And since it was on the, on the goal line, it, it's a touchdown. I think that's his first touchdown since his freshman year, a redshirt freshman year. Really? And, uh, I don't think there's anybody on your team that wanted to win this week more than Juan Shedrick. Being from the Bay Area. Good pressure again, but a nice throw and a nice catch. Uh, Chad Cota does a nice job coming over, not before they get the first down. Terrell Edwards, Joe Farwell, nothing there. Good job by Terrell. Closing the counter, bouncing off the block, getting first contact, Farwell assisting. Second down and 12 after the loss of two from the Oregon 31. Farwell again with help Jeff Cummins making the first contact. So Brian in to attempt a 40-yard field goal, and it is good. And so California responds. It's 14-10 Oregon. First play, next possession, last play of the quarter. So long. Bye-bye. Farewell. See you later. I think that was in a, wasn't that the song one time? Anyway, 80 yards for the touchdown, and that is our play of the day. Well, it's a very simple play, uh, a basic trap play. Washington had hurt Cal trapping a lot. What we did is we spread them out. We put the four receiver look in. Uh, we've got Whittle in the backfield, and all we're going to do is run a simple trap play here. Center blocks back, guard blocks over. Uh, in this case, the, the uh, tackle was a little wide, so we could slip inside. Tackle comes off, tackle comes off, ties up the backer. We did get a good uh, block downfield by one of our wide receivers. Whittle got hit at the line of scrimmage, but bounced off and then ran into another pile about where the umpire was, as you saw, and then bingo. And once he, was, uh, he split that, he was gone. And that's what happens when you have eight-man pressure defense up front. Let's take a look at it again. You see the trap block by John Tattersall. Good job by Mike Defonso on the linebacker. And the umpire uh, gets blocked as well as gets run into, got right in the pile. but. Uh, out of the pile comes number 14, and away he goes. The longest run uh, since an 80-yard run by Tony Cherry against Stanford back in 1985. That's amazing. And Ricky Whittle doing his Clark Kent impression there. The extra point by Thompson is good, and an explosive and wild first quarter is over. It's 21-10 to 10, Oregon. And we're ready for the second quarter as Oregon is leading California 21 to 10 as we pick up the second quarter highlights. Again, Herman O'Berry on the coverage of Sean Dawkins making the play. Cal also called for a hold, so this drive really is squelched. It's an excellent play by Herman. Uh, he's actually be beaten by a step but reaches out and deflects the ball away with his left hand, making a very nice play. Oregon gets it back, but on a second down play, disaster, Burwell into the line. The ball is knocked loose and recovered by Michael Davis, number 32 for Cal. This is the start of a series of disasters for us where we give them three possessions in a row, but our defense absolutely responds. Very nice play there, again by Herman O'Berry. What a game he had. In addition to his three interceptions, I believe he had five deflections. Screen pass, Chad Cota, five-yard loss. Thank you very much. Good job here, good, good pressure, but Cota reads it quickly, beats the screen to the receiver, and makes the tackle. So each team had possessions as we pick up further action here. You see the punt by Noonan. And again, what could have been maybe a touchdown ends up being a fumble. Well, you see uh, this shot from the end zone, and it's he's broken the whole a wave of Cal players going into the open and he gets the ball stripped out. 
Defense comes in. This is what we call sudden change. Almost intercepted there. Uh, Alex Molden had it go through his hands with a nice play. Almost got the ball out there by Ernest Jones. Barr scrambles, and he's held short of the first down. Nice play by Paul Rodriguez. Fourth and just a couple of inches. Good job by Coda forcing the play outside. Lindsey Chapman there, and an excellent play. You can see Coda coming up here, getting blocked, but knocking it down, and Herman O'Berry tackled for a loss. He had a phenomenal football game. He might have had as good a game as uh, any cornerback you've ever had. But California comes up with the interception. So for the third time in a quarter, Cal comes up with a turnover in Oregon territory, and they will not put any points on the board. Pass is incomplete. So on third now and 21. One yard gain, but uh, that doesn't get it done, and so Cal has to boot it away. Now, Coach, you had about two minutes left to go in the half. You got the ball back. Uh, take us through the next couple of plays. Here. The next couple of plays? Sure. I'm trying to get in the locker room. <laughs> uh, we get a first down here, so I call timeout and figure, well, if we pop another, I'm not about to put the ball in the air, okay? I'm not going to give them a chance to intercept it and run it back. Nice job by Ricky Whittle. And I think it's about after this play mm -hmm. uh, that we are going to now let the clock run out, and we're just going to go into dodge and, and regroup. After three three straight turnovers, we want to get in and, and discuss this little item in the locker room. Actually, and, uh, one more play, and that's because Tattersall called a timeout on me, my captain out there. He, he thought one of our players was hurt. Well, after an exciting first half, we get into the third quarter highlights, and the, the third and fourth quarters kind of uh, went like the first and second quarters did, as uh, California ends up with the advantage early in the quarter. You see uh, Thompson booting it away. Big hit on the special team. Nice job uh, by Mike Allison and Eric Castle. Uh, just giving them the two-yard cushion. You can see, boom, uh, pretty close, though. Pretty close, but what a big hit. And now it becomes, again, the Russell White Show. Five consecutive carries, 61 yards, and eventually a touchdown. Well, I obviously gave him a very inspirational halftime speech and told him how we were going to go out and stuff Cal and... Uh, here they come and just absolutely <laughs> walk through us. Just awful. And the next play we see is a second and eight from the 17. And We're in a blitz situation there ourselves, and once he popped the line, there wasn't anybody there. So the touchdown, an extra point, and it's 21-17. But that would be it for California's offense on this day, as Oregon's defense would dominate. And then as you did in the first quarter when California scored, you responded offensively and got a score of your own. Well, we did. A nice uh, job here by Sean Burwell. You notice he's, he's, he's even think, I mean, he's mm -hmm. thinking so much that he's not really utilizing his ability. You'll see he's, he's conscious of trying to get that football out of the way. He doesn't want to fumble anymore. Uh, we've, we've just got to get him to play football aggressively and not worry about it because he's, he'll switch it here. He's switching it back. He's switching it back the other side. He's getting it away. He, he's conscious of trying to protect that ball. Uh, and he's not running actually as hard as he's capable of running. Excellent job there. Uh, good protection. Obvious pass interference that I didn't think was going to be called for a little bit. In fact, the far side uh, referee made the call, and here's Willie Tate showing his elusivity. And that play was set up for a lot more than that. Uh, we had it well blocked. Uh, but Tommy responds with a nice field goal, uh, so we did answer their score. 24, 17, nine plus minutes left to go, third quarter. And again, special teams making a big play. This time it'll be Grady O'Connor. Great job by Grady O'Connor on a very high, a short, yes, but high hang time kickoff. And Grady comes around the outside of the wedge. Grady's uh, from Paisley, Oregon. Played eight man football and uh, is, is an outstanding uh, intermediate hurdler on our track team. See, Zumo tries to bang in the middle, nothing doing. Second down and eight. Good job there by Gary Williams, collapsing from the backside after it was stuffed up by Romeo Bandison. A lot of time to throw here, but Herman O'Berry again, great position, great interception. And you'll see that positioning from the low angle here on the left side of the screen. Got his body in great position, plays the ball high, and makes the interception. So you pick off California again. Burwell 
This is a oop, slip, but a good run there by Burwell. Nice blocking at the point of attack. Little rollout pass to Anthony Jones on the sideline. Pick up the first down. This is a second down and eight play. Bingo. Ronnie Harris, uh, after play action fake, just runs right by Chris Cannon. Fake the counter play that Burwell had just run successfully, and Ronnie Harris has got him beat by about four yards, and nobody's going to catch him. Not in this league. So that's a big score because now with the extra point, you're up by two touchdowns, 31-17. At this point, uh, with the game 31-17, do you change any uh, defensive thinking at all? No, not really, uh, and still not feeling very comfortable. Good job there by Jeff Sherman making the hit. Uh, Jeff Sherman, a uh, local product, and uh, went on scholarship this year after walking on. Bars pressured, takes him with bad decision on his part here, throwing across the field, across his body. Herman O'Berry again. This one, he gets about a one-yard return. He's, he's got a total of six interceptions, I think, for one-yard return. Good pressure there, but you can see uh, Herman just steps in front and makes the hit, or the interception, excuse me, and gets spun forward. That, by the way, is the first time an Oregon defender has intercepted three passes since Daryl Smith intercepted Ty Detmer three times uh, in 1989. See Danny finding Caprice and uh, picks up 15 yards and a first down here as once again you're in what appears to be scoring position. We do and uh, we really don't take full advantage of that nice interception or anything. We go back to throw and Danny gets sacked here. Uh, really didn't have much of a chance but he lost a little few more yards than I'd like and now I was kind of in between punting and kick, uh, kicking a field goal here. And once I saw where the ball was placed, I, I said uh, field goal, 54 yards. He had the distance, but uh, he had to get his shoe off. He had to hurry out there, because, and uh, I really didn't give him enough time. Well, he misses, but not by much. Uh, one of the rare misses for Tommy Thompson in the last uh, month or so. Let's get right into it. Uh, California with a football to start the quarter. Pretty good play action fake, but uh, didn't fake out Jeff Cummins. Jeff uh, makes a nice move here. Arm under getting tackled as he goes down, but grabs Barr's leg and makes a wish. <laughs> you, Almost Thanksgiving. That's right. Uh, you only had two sacks in the entire game, and they came on back-to-back -back back -back plays. Back-to-back plays. Uh, Terrell Edwards, uh, who'd been laying on the ground, he saw Barr start to go by. You can watch Edwards coming in from the top of your screen. He gets actually knocked to the ground right here. He's on the ground, reaches out, grabs the leg, and gets him down. Cal had to punt it away, so Oregon gets it back. Good job there. I get good discipline by your offensive line not to move as Cal jumped offside. It was, and that took a third and eight play and turned it into a third and a two play, or a third and seven play, it took, turned it into a third and two. We get the first down, come right back, hit Willie Tate on a play action pass. And unlike last week when I gave him a bad time about finding the first tackler and falling down, he made a real nice run, stepped inside a one tackler. You can see a little counter fake here again, same play. We threw to Ronnie Harris for the touchdown, only this time we come back and hit the tight end. Now watch this move right here. S little slip step, keeps it on. Terrible tackling attempt there by Cal. And a face mask penalty, that, again, that was missed there. Grabbed it, it was just an inadvertent one, but 41-yard gain by Willie Tate. Getting us out of the shadow of our own end zone. Second week in a row that he's had a big pass reception. Oh, well, great effort here. Great effort, but just short. Just couldn't quite keep his balance, just short of the first down. Fourth down and one. Go with a sneak and get the first. Put big old Heath in at center and uh, followed his 300-pound body in there and got the first down. Nice catch by Anthony Jones again on the quick out. Now you're in a position to go up by three scores. And Thompson comes in and bangs through a 43-yard field goal and now up 34 to 17 with only six and a half minutes to play. You're in pretty good shape. Starting to feel a little bit comfortable at this point. <laughs> and the kickoff team makes another big play. A low kick, uh, unusual for Tommy, but Houston coughs it up. Paul Rodriguez makes the recovery. Paul's had two chances to scoop fumbles up and run them in for touchdowns, and uh, we've got to start thinking that way with the new rule. Uh, yes, I'm happy to recover it, but boy, what a big play it would have been for Paul if he'd have just picked it up 
on the bounce and run it in. Probably wouldn't have been able to run it in, but I'd like to see him try it anyway. And speaking of trying, Thompson tries and is successful from 40 yards out. Now it's 37 to 17. Under five minutes to play. And Devon Hosey uh, packing a wallop at 155 pounds there, three yard loss. Tackle for a loss on a, on a little uh, flare pass. Good coverage downfield. That's, this is a good job by the secondary. Terrell Edwards getting pressure. Mingo Hosey liked it so much the first time, he came right back and did it again. So this is a third down and 10. You talk about Paul Rodriguez. He'd like to have that one. Right through his hands. He has yet to get a career interception, and that was a chance. Donovan Moore getting his chance. Ejected from last week's game when he might have been able to play for a really no apparent reason. Gets in and racks up 29 yards. I felt bad for him last week because he never left the bench and got ejected in that uh, melee up in Washington State. <laughs> but, but a great job here by Donovan on, on the uh, uh, little draw play. Nice run, getting some action, and, and, and obviously took full advantage of it. And we told you OB Babs would get a reception in this game, and here it is. Doug Musgrave, nice catch uh, by OB Babs. So that's the final play we will see in this contest. Final score, Oregon 37, California 17. The Ducks improved from 5 and 4. And uh, even their conference slate, uh, while California drops to 4 and 5. Let's take a look at the team statistics as you look at them there. 37 points and only 14 first downs, indicative of the big plays made. Passing, that's the second highest passing total for the Ducks this year, and also the second highest total offense only UNLV when the Ducks were over 500 tops that mark flipping the page you see the turnovers three and four but California did not get any points off of Oregon's three turnovers penalties Oregon again pretty good in that department that's about the seasonal average Tommy Thompson had a heck of a day again punting the football third down conversions Cal only two of 15 they were number one in the conference converting third downs coming into this game individually Ricky Whittle Career high, 129 yards, and his first Oregon touchdown. And Russell White, big day for him, but in a losing effort. Look at the quarterbacks, their numbers. Danny O'Neill, 11 of 24, 222 yards. He had the one touchdown, and he had an interception. And Barr came into the uh, conference game second best as far as efficiency. That uh, might be uh, dropping a little bit after the three interceptions in this one. And defensively, Herman O'Berry, clearly the star with the three interceptions. He had a host of tackles and deflections. Joe Farwell with 12 tackles. And Gary Williams, we didn't mention him much uh, during the highlights, but he had 11 tackles, maybe one of his better games. After the contest, we went into the locker room and got the players' reaction to the victory. I mean, it starts down the trenches. And our line, uh, you can tell in their eyes before the game, you know, when they're ready. And they, the first thing they said to me, let's go out there and punch them right in the mouth. And so I knew they were ready. And uh, when they called that trap play, I just, I got up to the line and I saw the, the guy over there and I was like, oh. And then he shifted, I just started smiling. I almost uh, jumped, off, jumped off the balls. All phases of the game got to go well. Special teams, you know, especially, we, we always like to concentrate on that. But offense and defense, everybody put in their two cents. And, you know, that, that's, that's what we got to do these next two games, too, to get through UCLA and Oregon State. We ran a couple of, uh, this one buck class to roll out, play action. And I went past him one time, and Danny didn't see me. I guess he threw it off the flat. But later he came back, and I just, I just basically ran a streak, and uh, there was no one in the middle or anything. So. That's the key is, you know, you're going to give up things by, by coming in the 80. And, uh, you know, they gave up the middle with, uh, with Ricky's run, and they gave, it, they gave it up to Ronnie. There was no help. So uh, uh, it was a big play. Uh, offense can make big plays against that kind of defense. And, and, and I think that's the kind of offense we have now is to make the big plays. I mean, we just played a lot better game than we've, than we've played against in the past two years. This, the past two years have really been, I mean, just like a thorn in my back against them, you know, and all of our backs, you know, and it's, it really feels good to, you know, finally beat California because we played really awful against them the past two years, and we got after them today. I haven't been playing well, and I haven't been happy with the way I've been playing, and I just made it made a commitment to myself to up my up my game and um, just go out and just let it all hang out. <laughs> I knew it was coming all the way. I mean, when you study a week worth of film and and, and you see it and, and you make the plays, it just <laughs> just makes you feel real good. We did, like you said, we started out a little shaky. You know, Russell White had broke a couple big plays on us, and. Uh, 
went on the sidelines and just, you know, got together and started talking it up, you know, and so we have to tighten up. And uh, after that drive, you know, we started shutting them down a little bit, molded together, and we started playing some good defense. A couple of years ago, uh, UCLA came to town towards the end of the season, and you needed to beat UCLA to, to go to a bowl game. It's a kind of similar situation. Yeah, this is going to be a big one. This, I mean, I hope all the fans come out here and just pack this thing because uh, it's my last one here, so, you know, and it's I I hope my uh, last game in Austin is a, is a memorable one. And it's going to be a you know it's going to be a high pressure must win game. Let's talk about UCLA. You, you kind of scratch your head when you talk about the Bruins, but they are going through this year what you went through last year at the quarterback position and other positions with the tremendous injuries. This is one of the highlights from yesterday's a victory over Oregon State. Chris Alexander uh, running for a touchdown against Oregon State. Tell us about UCLA and what they've gone through. Well, they have had. Uh, an unusual amount of injuries, uh, but certainly their quarterback position has won, been the most affected, I would say. Certainly, uh, they are an outstanding, talented team, but they have, do not have an experienced quarterback right now. They uh, lost Maddox to the draft. Uh, Walker came in and played very well, but he's hurt. I think he'll be back against us. That's bad news for us. Uh, they played a true freshman, Fiend and uh, he pulled a hip flexor muscle. I don't know whether he'll be ready. And then a young man by the name of Barnes, who was a walk-on, who'd been at Western Oregon and Santa Barbara, uh, has started. He, he was the starting quarterback and looks like played the distance against Oregon State last uh, yesterday. They've also lost uh, uh, Ale. La Chapelle has missed some games, so that they've had keep people miss significant time this year or out for the course of the season. But you know, when you go down UCLA's roster, we were looking up uh, Chris Alexander. We hadn't heard much of him. And here's a guy that was a sprinter in high school, great talent, so it's not like the cupboard's bare. Well, he has some talent, obviously. Uh, Kevin Williams is out, who's a, a great back, rushed for 1,000 yards uh, last year, but here comes a, a young man that you just mentioned that rushed for 225 yards against Oregon State last week, and uh, they have speed, they have talent. This is going to be a tough football game for us. We need our stadium full and rocking. We need all the help we can get. All righty. We'll see what happens next week at Autzen Stadium. Come out and at least uh, send those seniors off uh, their final game at Autzen Stadium. We want to thank everybody that showed up today in our studio audience for uh, joining us, and we thank you very much for watching as well. So for the coach, I'm Todd McKim. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you next week. The Oregon Sports Network presents The Rich Brooks Show. Sponsored in part by Budweiser.